With this procedural explosion effect, you won't have to rely on stock footage, and you'll be in total control for making variations. You could use this for transitions, special effects, creating assets for games, and a bunch of other mind-blowing stuff. And there's a few more things I wanted to mention. I'll remember them later. Starting out, right click in your media pool, go to new fusion composition, hit create. Now you can double click on that fusion composition to jump into fusion. I have one open, so I'm gonna click on the fusion tab down here to jump into it. To start this thing off, click and drag a background tab here. And let's press two to preview that in a second viewer. I'll make the type to gradient. We want to adjust this start X. You could click and drag here to see what it's doing. And if I make this 0.5, that'll be the center. And we want radial gradient. I'll just block in the colors here, selecting this first stop, clicking this drop down so I can get the color. I'm gonna make this a bright yellow. I'm gonna click this stop over here on the right. I'm gonna make this a red. Now I'm gonna move this red over a bit and then I'm gonna click and drag at the end and I'm gonna make this black and I'm gonna drag the transparency slider up. Maybe move this in a little bit more. I'll probably adjust more detail into here later. Now I wanna take the end X and I wanna make this very close to the center but I don't wanna go on top cause I'm gonna get a color like that which I don't want. So I could just type in 0.501. All right, that should do it. Now, this is something you probably don't have to worry about because when you create the default fusion comp, it's five seconds. I've previously trimmed mine down, but what I wanna do is get some more time in here so I can see more than 100 frames. What I'm gonna do is click on my edit tab. Again, you don't probably need to do this, but I'm gonna click on this. I'm gonna drag this out here and come back into fusion. Now I have more frames to work with. And you might want a fast explosion. You might want a slow explosion. I'm gonna make this a little longer than I think I need. And then I could always move the keyframes later. So let's say we want this to start from, oh, and I'm also noticing my end keyframe went back. I'm gonna type in 0.501 to get it how it was. I'm gonna set a keyframe for the end at the start. So hit this and let's go somewhere around here and make this back to its default. So we could set this to one. Maybe you want a small explosion and you could set it to 0.6 or 0.7, but I'm gonna set it all the way back to one. So here's our animation. Yeah, probably a little too slow, but I'll worry about that later. And as I'm looking at this, I think a little bit more fall off is needed. So I'm gonna take the gradient and move this slider in a bit to the left. And for our next course, we're gonna have a delightful fast noise and displace. So let's hold down shift space bar, DISP, displace, press enter, click the output onto our displace. Now click off of your displace and hold down shift space bar, FAST, fast noise, click it, press enter. Let's put this on top, click and drag down here. All right, let's press two to preview our displace and let's drag out to make sure we could see a nice area here. All right, so select your displace, take the refraction strength, drag it a bit, take your offset. Let's drag it all the way to the right. And we should actually click in here and type in one cause our slider only goes so far. Now let's select our vast noise, press one to preview it on the left. I'm gonna click on color I don't know why this is the default, but I like to just drag this alpha over so I could see clearly what's going on. Now click on the noise tab of your displace. Let's take our detail up. Let's take our contrast. Let's take our contrast way up. Let's type in 10. Brightness, I can bring that down a little bit. Scale, let's bring the scale up. Let's click on discontinuous and let's click on inverted. All right, that's pretty fun, but that's a little aggressive. So let's take the contrast down a bit. All right, that's better. Maybe even adjust the brightness a bit. And it just doesn't seem right to have an explosion with no seethe to it. So let's add some of that. One thing you'll notice is as the explosion gets bigger, the detail is staying the same. So I wanna animate the scale of our fast noise. Back in time, somewhere around here where I could still see enough and take my scale, maybe drag it up a little bit over seven. All right, something like that. Keyframe it. 
drag this in the other direction where it's really huge and take this somewhere a little bit below seven. All right, I think that's good. So now as we look at this, you'll see the scale is matching the growing of the gradient and it looks like everything is matching. One thing you will notice when the gradient stops scaling up where we see this tick mark here, it just stops abruptly and the explosion is kind of holding in place there. So let's go to background, select it. Let's click on the spline up here. So we find displacement. I see here there's no ease in, so I select this keyframe, press F to flatten it out. That should smooth out the transition there. All right, we could click our spline button to close that out. So with our background selected, if we want, we could push the colors here in this gradient. So I'm gonna click, click, click a few times in there and maybe take this first one, make it a really bright yellow, maybe give it a little bit more space in here. All right, so we're seeing a little bit more contrast in there. Maybe take this next one, make it a little bit darker or brighter, just adjust the hue a tiny bit and then adjust the saturation lightness a bit here. You don't wanna go so far where you see too much contrast, but just a little bit can go a long way. I'll take this one here just before our last red. Let's adjust that a little bit. All right, so that's kind of brightening up the center. And you can also shift these sliders around a little bit. Again, being very subtle, that's the key at this point. Continuing along that theme, I could add a soft glow. So I'm gonna click on displays, shift space bar, G-L-O-W, soft glow, click that, press enter or return, whatever floats your boat. All right, we don't need to see so much of this viewer number one anymore. So soft glow, let's take the threshold, let's take the gain down, let's make sure we see what we're doing by selecting this and pressing two. All right, let's try it. Yeah, a little bit less gain. All right, I wanna adjust my threshold so I see the glow focused in mostly on these center areas. We could adjust the glow size too. I think I want a pretty small glow size. All right, so yeah, it's a little bit too much. So what I might need to do, bring the gain up. I don't like how it's getting everything blown out, but I could come back into my background. I could find this last red here. Instead of being so red, I could darken it. All right, that's adding some good contrast. Maybe now this one doesn't fit as well. And if you wanna make a bit of a smoky look, we could click over here, get one more stop in there, take this down. I mean, you might wanna to go to black, but maybe just like a very, very dark red and then adjust these sliders here. All right, I continued to fiddle around with these and this is the, the settings that works for my gradient. And one thing I'm not quite happy about is the initial explosion. I think it's a bit too slow, so let's select background click on our spline and find our displacement, scale this up. And I'm gonna take this and just bring this handle up here so it scales up from the beginning faster. Maybe even take the second one and holding down Alt, click and drag this. Alt keeps it from rotating the handle so we're gonna have a longer ease into this keyframe. Hit my spline to close that up. Now what I want is a fading out towards the end here. And unfortunately, I wish there was a fade control, an easy fade control just on the background here, but there's not, so we gotta do a workaround. So I'm gonna select my soft glow and hit shift space bar, M-E-R-G, merge, hit enter, and I need a background. I'm gonna click and drag one from here, connect it up. All right, so the green line means this background is gonna be on top, which I don't want. I'm gonna select the merge and press control T. Now it's a yellow line, meaning the background is on the bottom. And let's actually select our merge and press two to preview it. So we see we got this black background. Color can be whatever you want it to be. But the good thing is we don't even really need to see this. So if you do need a background, you can have it. I'm just gonna drag this alpha. What now I can do is go to the merge and I have this blend. It would be so much nicer if I could just do this directly in here. That would save me two nodes, but it's not that hard to set up. So let's find the spot where we want things to be fading out, maybe somewhere around here, and click on our merge, click on the keyframe for blend, and then over here, set the blend to zero. So let's click our merge, drag it to the media out, and in order to get better playback, I like to go to the edit tab over here, 
go to playback, render cache, set this to user, and then wait for this line to turn blue from red. And once it does, you can hit the play button. And while I'm recording, I'm not getting perfect playback, but I'm getting close to real time. Yeah, this is a little bit slow and deliberate. As I talked about earlier, probably animating this up faster would be better, but I just wanted to make it more clear of what's going on. I don't really like how it's starting out. Maybe it's coming to its full size a little too quickly. I'm gonna jump back into the Fusion tab. So we wanna look at background, hit our spline editor, find this displacement here. And I'm gonna give myself more room to work. Just make life a little bit easier and frame this up. I'm also going to click fast noise, click again to hide that, click on merge. So we got a little bit of a cleaner view. And let's take this and be a little bit more subtle with that. Okay, so this looks a little bit better. This is something you're just gonna have to take some time, fine tune those curves to get just the right look. What I'd probably also do is take this second one here, hold down alt and drag it over. Maybe also alt drag this to increase the ease in. Maybe even come to the uh, scale here because now these aren't really matching up. So our scale, let's click this, alt drag. So these are kind of matching up. Doesn't have to be perfect. Also hold down F, flatten that out. Let's frame this up by clicking this little button here and maybe move this over. They're going in the opposite directions but the curvature is matching now a little bit nicer, so maybe this will work. Yeah, I think this faster speed is better now. Our fading out is taking too long, so we just need to adjust that. Back in our spline, let's turn on merge, and all right, so I got an issue. This purple line is in the way from me being able to select this keyframe easily, so click on background one more time, and this square means it's just a reference. Now I can select this, select this, hold down alt and then drag them both over so that they end in a similar spot. And I could take this one, since everything else is easing in, I could press F and just kind of match curvature. Okay, that looks pretty good. Timing looks good. Everything is working well. Now the fun part is adding variation. Back in the Fusion tab, let's close our spline window down here. So variation is very fun because you could render out 50 of these really fast, really easy, build yourself up a nice stock library of your own footage. Go to your fast noise and what we got here is seethe. So whenever I change this from zero to one, we basically have a whole new explosion. You can just really drag this if you want. You can have a million I don't know, or is that 10 million? A million different variations, and with this all kind of loaded into RAM, these will render out very quickly. Another variation is in this background here, if I'm needing a little sharper contrast here, I could take this slider and drag it over to the left, and now you'll get a sharper edge between transparent. If you're playing this on a black background, it's not gonna really matter, but if you're putting this over a colored background, you can decide how soft or how sharp and of course you could come into your displace, go to refraction strength, drag this over, and now you have more like a series of small explosions or um, I don't know what you call this, energy or lava or something like that. You could also adjust your offset if you wanted to cover more of the screen. You could uncheck discontinuous, uncheck inverted if you want more of a fireball type effect. 